Let's talk about another Cam. It's Cam Akers. And we want to compare him to DeAndre Swift, the two rookie court, uh, running backs coming in right now. Swift, RB27. Akers, ADP, RB29. So both these guys going as high-end RB3s. I, I'd be thrilled to have either as my three, but who are you taking of the two? They're pretty similar, but relative to ADP, would you rather go with Swift or would you rather go with Akers? Yeah, it's actually interesting that they're going so close because for me, it's pretty easy. I would take DeAndre Swift in this one. And yes. I, I know that this neither situation is necessarily great and perfect, but DeAndre Swift is going against one guy for touches in this backfield. It's on Johnson, where Cam Akers is going against Daryl Henderson and Malcolm Brown. I mean, everything to me, like if we're comparing Swift versus Akers, I, I just lean Swift in just about every category. So I just laid out one. Swift has to fend off one guy where Akers has to fend off two. Swift, I think, is a better player overall. He, I think he's a more well-rounded player at this point in his career. Akers is still very talented. The draft capital was all, also lower, though, and things like that. Um, Swift is playing. I know the Lions offensive line is not necessarily great, but the Rams has a lot of question marks as well. So I'll call that one a push maybe. Um, but to me, it's just like I think Swift has a much higher likelihood to get all the goal line work in Detroit, where with Cam Akers in L.A., I'm just concerned that Malcolm Brown being a veteran in that offense is going to vulture away a lot more touchdowns than people think. And to you know add more icing to the consideration, like the icing on top of this one, I know it's early, but in camp, Akers has had some fumbling issues, um, according to some beat reporters. So if you've got a rookie who's already having fumbling issues in camp, I know Sean McVay is not going to put the ball in his hands on the goal line early when he's got a trusted veteran in Malcolm Brown that he could use. So with Akers, I feel like it might take him a while to get ramped up. Um, and with DeAndre Swift, I love the talent. I think he's totally well-rounded. He's going to be great out of the backfield in the receiving game. He's going to be great as a runner. I do think Kerryon Johnson is a better talent than Daryl Henderson or Malcolm Brown. But Kerryon Johnson, we all know, has had injury issues every single year to this point in his NFL career. So I think DeAndre Swift has a ton of upside. I think both have upside if they were to be like the guy in their backfield. But I think there's a much higher likelihood in their rookie year that Swift gets significantly more volume than Cam Akers, and that's kind of the difference for me. I, I think I agree. I really do. I'm, I'm all aboard this Swift hype train. I, I take both of these guys well above their ADP. I have them very close to my rankings, and it's funny how similar their situations act, actually are. They share a backfield with unproven veterans. They're in offenses that put up a lot of yardage and points. They have rough offensive line situations. Uh, Football Outsider says, I think Detroit was 20th in run blocking. LA was 19th, so they're right there neck and neck. But these are both elite prospects at the running back position. Both are explosive on the ground. They can get it done in the passing game. But, yeah, like you said, we, we got to go with Swift. He has way less to compete with. I think he's going to hit the ground running. In an offense that passes more often to the running back position, I want to talk about Carrion a little bit here. He had eight games healthy in 2019, only played six games in 2018. He's already practicing with a knee brace, and he's made it clear in all of his interviews. You can go look these up. Like He, he knows and he plans on sharing the load with Swift. He's, like, glad that they brought him in, which uh, if I'm a running back, I'm like, no, I'm going to I'm gonna. Compete, and I'm going to show you guys that I'm better. But he's already like, oh, I'm excited to share the load with Swift. Carry on's whole skill set. When when he was good, we have seen flashes. His whole skill set's about being explosive. I'm just not sure if he has any juice left in that department. I need to see it before I can believe it. But let's just say last year continues. Detroit's already shown that they're moving on from Carry on in the passing game. He only had 1.9 targets per game last season. In the eight games, he had 15 targets. He caught 10 of them. J.D. McKissick and freaking Ty Johnson last year in Detroit combined for 73 targets. So yeah. in total, this backfield had 92 targets to running backs with the awful slow-paced offense that couldn't stay on the field with David Blau and Jeff Driscoll at quarterback. The year prior, they had 138 targets to running backs. Before that, 108. So this team is going to pass the running back position. They've shown it. Think back to like Theo Riddick. Uh, and with the early second round draft capital, I think Detroit's going to get Swift going early in the passing game. And I think once they see him making plays, they're not going to be able to help themselves. They're going to start peppering Swift with targets, giving to him on the ground. For sure. To that point, something that blew my mind is the Rams were dead last in the NFL last season in targets to the running back. Like, that's crazy. Because I remember the dominant Todd Gurley years, two years ago and three years ago. And it seemed like they were throwing it to him a ton. And they were still in the bottom half. 
But last year, they were dead last. Only 61 Brutal. targets to the running back position last year. So now we're saying, okay, is can like Gurley's a great pass catcher. And we're saying, is Akers a better pass catcher than Todd Gurley? No. So are they really going to start throwing to the running back more all of a sudden? I don't think so. So you're so right. From a receiving perspective, especially in these PPR, half PPR leagues, that's just another point for DeAndre Swift in this debate. I, so. I think Swift could get as high as 70 <laughs> targets in year one. I know it's a hot take. But if he's wow. taking in all the, you know, they let J.D. McKissick walk. I know Bo Scarborough is still in there. But in terms of passing game weapons, I don't even know if, if Ty Johnson is still on the team. It's it's Swift. It's going to be Swift. They're going to get him early and often through the air. That's already what the camp reports are saying. I don't want to read into those too much, but I'm excited for Swift, man. I think his upside's insane. If, if you're in a PPR, have PPR, you got to get him as your three. Two years ago, Theo Riddick was at 75 targets. And that's when Carrion had 39 of his own, so... I mean, last year, the wheels kind of fell off for Detroit with Matt Stafford going out, and it was crazy. I mean, carry on was out. They didn't really have any options in the in the running back room. But even two seasons ago, Detroit was fourth in the NFL and targets to the running back position. So with carry on and DeAndre Swift probably being a one-two punch, I don't know that they're going to have anyone else even involved at all in this offense. I do expect a pretty good target share for DeAndre Swift. And, you know, on the ground, I, there's a chance Akers ends up with more rushing yards on the ground. Um, just because carry on Johnson should see, I mean, if he stays healthy, he should see 10 to 12 carries a game, but I, I just don't think acres has enough juice on the ground from a sheer yardage perspective to overtake Swift and fantasy value, especially when I know Detroit running backs historically have not been, you know, thousand yard rushers, guys that are plunging into the end zone a ton, but with cam acres, I don't necessarily see the path to eight to 10 touchdowns this season. I, with those other guys there as a rookie, I just don't know that he can, he can let's, do it. Let's compare the, the veterans. So we talked about Kyrion. Now let's look at Daryl Henderson. And I know Malcolm Brown's there, but Daryl Henderson, he was a third-round rookie pick last year. I think the Rams are going to try to – He's dealing with an injury. Exactly. And I, I think they're going to try to see what they have. I think the Rams have not given up on Henderson at all whatsoever. I think he's more on the upswing and Kyrion's on the decline. So that's where I'm like, well, the Rams are probably going to get Henderson more involved. He's coming in healthy. I know – he suffered a hamstring injury in camp already. They say it's mild. He might be ready for week one. Week one he might not, which is where this whole take could kind of fall apart in the Swift Acres debate. But Malcolm Brown had five touchdowns last year. That was more than anyone the Lions backfield had. So Malcolm Brown of all remains constant. He's the goal line back in LA. I think it's awful. I hate it for fantasy. I hate it for Acres, but. I think he's going to be vulturing those touchdowns on the ground, whereas like I, I don't know if Bo Scarborough is going to be doing that to Swift. I don't think he will. No, I agree. I agree with you. And I, like to be clear, Akers is hands down the most talented running back on the LA Rams, but it's yep. just a matter of workload. And the one, the one path we have to, you know, range of outcomes, there is a chance Cam Akers obviously ends up in front of DeAndre Swift this year. We're just putting our money on Swift. But one of the clearest avenues for Cam Akers is if Daryl Henderson does miss – week one or misses week one and two and comes out and gets an increased workload because Daryl Henderson is out and absolutely lights the world on fire. Sean McVay is going to ride that hot hand. So that could be the way that Cam Akers gets his foot in the door and gets major snaps and usage early on in his rookie season. Otherwise, I think Cam Akers owners are going to be frustrated because it could take him some time to get going. So keep that in mind. If you draft Cam Akers or DeAndre Swift, for that matter, I love them as an RB3, love them as an RB4. Rookies that you don't have to throw out there week one and cross your fingers, but you can kind of wait and see what you've got. And if they're crushing it, then you roll them out there week two. And if not, if it takes them four or five weeks to get going, you're not just like burning a hole in your team by getting three points out of your running back every week. Yeah, I think, I think the final verdict is we're okay with either of these guys. Uh, but we lean Swift just by a hair as it stands right now.